For the best liberty-oriented talk 24-7, visit lrn.fm. So one question I have is just, I guess there was an incident, I think it was with your planning commission, it was the Lakes Region Planning Commission, where... I'm going to talk to you, I'm whoa, 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 whoa. I have a question for Mike. Yeah, but uh, I think he's going home. going home. Well, well then I'm going to follow you a little ways. All right, so that's me doing what I do, saying no to a bureaucrat. But unfortunately, it's not always this way when somebody wants to censor me. I don't always do exactly the thing that you viewers would probably want. I had an incident a while back at a Free Stater related event. I was basically taking a wide shot of an inanimate object and a person who happened to be in the shot, a liberty activist, essentially ordered me not to film them and or to erase any film that I shot of them. In a seemingly unrelated matter, I got a comment on one of my YouTube channels a while back saying, Ridley, it, it seems like you're trying to disassociate yourself from the liberty movement in New Hampshire. Well, actually, these two matters are connected. The fact is, a union leader reporter or a more fully independent reporter would have been able to say, uh, no. For me, the fact that the demand was made indoors on private property being rented by, sort of, by the demander's associates, the fact that I have to assume the person may have had some legitimate reason for not wanting to be filmed, the fact the person doesn't work for the government, thus doesn't get my money, and the fact that I provided this courtesy for others, it all conspired to keep me from keeping the video. But it sure left a bad taste in my mouth. It's one of those things where the way you ask is 90% of how you want to respond. Other people who don't want to be on camera have made you know, a request. Would you be willing to fill in the blank? Would you mind not fill in the blank without getting angry? But when this person acted like I was under their control, like I worked for them, well, like I worked for this person individually. I guess sometimes I do work for the Free State Project itself. But anyway, it was a bad feeling. I left a bad taste in my mouth. I felt like I was denying access to the public to, to view anti-transparency behavior on the part of a, an activist involved in a movement perceived as being pro-transparency. You know, this was in an area that was available to the general public, even if it was private property. It just felt wrong. It reminded me that I want to be associated with an idea more than I do with any individual or organization. The idea, thou shalt not aggress, nor commit harmful fraud. And the idea that if you want to get traction for this concept, you move to New Hampshire and do something about it there. Everything else is just details. Or interpretation. Anyhow, this sort of thing is why you see me more at government events these days than Free Stater events, by far. My place is on the periphery, usually, of government events where I can peaceably confront people that have no power over me except uh, the power of government. But I don't You're getting pretty, pretty close. Karen, why did you stop stop me from try to stop me from filming the door or try to get them to close the door earlier? Here's another example. I was talking to a liberty activist the other day who was kind of he's kind of trash talking a different liberty activist, both in New Hampshire. I said, well, I tell you what, next time you're going to be in the same place as him, can you let me know and I, I can kind of try to maybe be there and I can get the two of you to debate each other on camera. But his immediate response is, oh, no, no, I, I don't I don't really want to debate. I don't want to do that. Well, the conversation really, you know, didn't have, I, I wasn't really, you know, in Ridley Report mode when I was talking to this guy. And I've known him since before the Ridley Report. So I could always report his name or I could, uh, I could interview the person he's trash talking about and say, hey, so-and-so has this stuff to say about you. How do you respond? Uh, and by the way, that guy won't debate you. Well, if I did that... I would be within my legal rights. Maybe it would also be ethical, but it would be perceived as a stab in the back to the person who called me and was just sort of maybe, maybe thought they were talking to me in confidence. 
Again, the union leader wouldn't have that problem with this guy, and a more independent reporter wouldn't have that problem. I get bogged down by my connections. I am too close to this person to have full latitude in the way that I report on this person's activities. The closest results in a phone call, which otherwise wouldn't have happened if I had been a complete stranger or uh, you know someone with a purely professional relationship. Anyhow, so that's one reason you just don't see me at free stater events as much as there's also the fact that I'll go to some events, but there's also this fact that you know gathering together in one place there are uses for it, but in some ways it's just barely activism. You know, the activism is supposed to be us besieging the enemy in some form or fashion. <laughs> some peaceable form or fashion. All right, just a couple thoughts I wanted to get out of my brain and insert them into yours. LRN.FM, 24 hours of Liberty Radio every day. Now available on satellite, too, at sat.lrn.fm. That's what a satellite sounds like. Put it on your unlicensed station. Wear it in your hair. But above all, don't despair. The Liberty message is getting out. And right now, you're missing it. Or maybe you're not. But skip on over to LRN.FM. Feds don't want you to hear them.